These are the spiders in your house. So, if you live in North America, you've almost definitely encountered one of these. And you probably have several of them living in your house or your shed or garage or whatever. So, this is a chickpea or smaller sized brownish grayish, very unremarkable looking spider. It makes a messy cobweb. Uh, you usually find it upside down in that cobweb, and you'll find it both inside and outside your house. Now, when people come across these, usually the first questions that they're going to ask are, is it a brown recluse? If not, what is it? Is it venomous? Oh no, it's having babies. And what can I expect from this spider? And I'm going to go through all of those and a little bit more. But before I do, there is a lot of bad information on the internet about spiders and a lot of that bad information looks a lot like good information and is actually trying to be but old myths do die hard so in this video i have done my best to try to make sure that everything that i'm telling you here is backed by actual scientific research and studies or material adjacent to it that actually cites the research itself as much as I can. Uh, and for that, a big thank you goes out to Dr. Catherine Scott at McGill University, who was an enormous help in tracking down some of this research. So thank you, Dr. Scott. So question one, is this a brown recluse? This is definitely not a recluse. And we know that on a number of counts. So the markings on the abdomen, you can see this spider has this marbly sort of random pattern on the abdomen. The abdomen of a brown recluse is very plain with no markings at all. This spider makes a messy cobweb. Brown recluse doesn't do that. This spider has a more or less blank prosoma where the brown recluse has the famous fiddle marking. This spider has banding on the legs. The brown recluse does not. And the eye pattern is all wrong. This spider has eight eyes in two rows, where a brown recluse has only six eyes in three groups. So this is definitely not a recluse. Well, what is it then? This is the common house spider. Yep, that's seriously what they called it. Probably because this is the most frequently encountered spider in North American homes. Uh, it might be a close tie between that and the cellar spider. This is sometimes called the American house spider internationally, but usually in North America we refer, we refer to it as the common house spider. Not to be confused with the giant house spider of the Pacific Northwest, which is a very different animal altogether. Now you would think that such a plain, common, run-of-the-mill spider would have an equally simple scientific name, right? Peristiatoda tepidariorum. It's 12 syllables. Whose idea was this, you say? Well, it was a few different people, and this spider has gone by at least three different names in its 180-year history of being described. And as I found out, that can make research a little bit difficult. If you're trying to Google this spider or find more information on it, you may have to look under one of its previous names, usually the Achaeorania tepidariorum name, because it went by that one for a really long time. Now, at least I think this is Peristiatoda tepidariorum. It's easily confused with Peristiatoda tabulata, which is a little bit smaller and will often make a little hide in the middle of its web out of leaves or debris or what have you. Now, tabulata is only found in eastern North America, but the two species are so close together that for our purposes here, we can treat them as the same spider. The only way apparently to really tell them apart is a close examination of the genitalia. Now, I tried to narrow it down from the photos that I had, but I didn't really know what I was looking for, and it may surprise you to learn that finding good, detailed, reliable photos of this spider's genitalia on the internet is more difficult than it sounds. So I'm not totally positive, but I'm pretty sure this is Tepidariorum. These spiders are members of the Theridiidae family, which are known as cobweb weavers. They're sometimes referred to as comb-footed spiders. It's a pretty big family. It does include the Black Widow, but it includes a whole bunch of others too. You don't really need to worry about that. 
Theradeity are known for making these cobwebs. The cobwebs are usually sticky and the spider just waits in them waiting for an insect to come across and get stuck in the strands and then they zoom in and grab it. So that's how they hunt. And these spiders are synanthropic, meaning they live in and around human structures. They've been living quite close to humanity for a long time, so they're well used to people being around. Let's go ahead and take a look at a few of these and get a good idea of what the identifying features are. So this spider is going to have kind of a brownish, grayish, marbled abdomen. It's got a pattern to it, sort of, but it does more or less look kind of random. On the females, this abdomen is usually going to be higher than it is long. The males, a little bit less so. But overall, it's going to be fairly spherical, especially on the females. You can't really say that they're, you can't really say more than brownish grayish because the coloration on these spiders does vary quite a bit. And look at the banding on the legs here. This is an identifying feature that you'll definitely see. This is more apparent on the females than it is on the males, but you will see this banding, especially on the females. Here's a male. You can see that banding's a lot less apparent. You see it a little bit over here, not so much over here. Uh, we can tell this is a male by these larger pedipalps. Kind of looks like he's wearing boxing gloves. And you can see that abdomen's a lot smaller. And the males in general are just a lot smaller. But they do have that same patterning on the abdomen. Another thing that you'll notice is the leg pattern. And this leg pattern holds true for females and males. So the front pair of legs here is going to be the longest. And then the second and the fourth pairs are going to be next and the third pair is going to be the shortest one the eye pattern this one finally let me take a photo of her face and if we look at the eyes here there are in fact eight uh, there's two here you got two here there's actually two right here and two more right here but this is the arrangement of the eyes on these you're not likely to really be able to get a very good look at them um, but if you do manage to get a look at the eyes, that's the pattern you're looking for. And then you'll also find them in sort of this messy cobweb. Uh, and the messy cobweb is going to have a denser spot in the middle here. You can sort of see it here. This section that she's actually sitting in is quite a bit denser than the outlying areas out here. And this is how they'll, they'll normally sit. She'll normally sit sort of upside down with her legs bunched up like this, and that's what makes it so difficult to get a good shot of their faces. So if you've got all of these features, you've most likely got a common house spider. Is it venomous and does it bite? Well, is it venomous? The answer to that is yes, of course it is, because that's how spiders work. The better question is, is it dangerously venomous? And the answer to that is no, it's not dangerous to humans at all. Even if you did manage to get bitten, you might have some pain, some swelling, some itching, but that would be about it. There's no systemic effects, so it, that venom doesn't affect the whole body in any way. The term is not medically significant, meaning the bites from these, when they do happen, virtually never require any kind of medical attention. They'll clear up on their own. Also, this spider is generally pretty reluctant to bite. It's not going to bite unless it's trapped against your skin and squeezed. And that's a really unlikely scenario for reasons that I'll get into a little bit later anyway. You can see they're not particularly aggressive uh, in this footage here. I've actually got my finger stuck right into the web and I'm wiggling it around. And this spider seems completely unbothered by this. She wants nothing to do with me. So they're not going to come out and try to bite you all of a sudden. Oh no, it's having babies. So you see that white fluffy ball in the web and you're wondering, are those eggs? Yes, that is in fact an egg sac. And if you're looking here and you're seeing all those little specks, maybe you're wondering, are those the eggs from the egg sac? Look a little closer. Those aren't eggs. Those are baby spiders probably a couple of hundred of them. So obviously if things have gotten to this point, then... No, I'm kidding. Please, nobody do this. It's going to be okay. Now, 
yes, this female can produce 12 or maybe more of these egg sacs in her lifetime after having mated only once, which is really kind of remarkable. But at this point, I can imagine several of you saying to me, but Travis, this is now thousands of babies that we're talking about. In what charmed universe does this scenario not end with a complete infestation of my house past the matches? It's going to be all right. And here's why. One of these egg sacs has between 100 and 400 eggs in it. And once those eggs hatch, the spiderlings will stay in mom and dad's web for a few days, and then they'll start to disperse. And once they do, they start dying. These little baby spiders are virtually defenseless, and they're not even really able to catch their own food at this point. So between cannibalism, predation, dehydration, and starvation, the mortality rate on these things is astronomically high, to the tune of 98 or 99 percent. So... Of all of these spiderlings here, if they're very lucky, three or four of them might survive long enough to actually build a web, and they're only going to stick around if you've got enough prey insects in your house to keep them alive. If you don't, they'll either leave or starve to death. So they're not an organized army, they're not here to conquer your house for the spider kingdom, they're just spiders. It's going to be okay, so relax, don't freak out. And above all, don't set fire to your house. What can you expect from this spider? So this is really what everybody wants to know. How polite is this spider in your house? How is having this spider around going to affect you? Well, it's a little bit of a mixed bag with this spider. There's really three things that are going to affect you about having any spider in your house. The webs, how they move around, and potentially bites. So the webs of these spiders, they're untidy, they're sticky, which means dust is going to stick to them, and they're going to be quite visible. And these spiders don't rebuild their web every day like orb weavers do, so the dust does build up. They're a little bit unsightly. Also, when these spiders catch prey, they eat it, and then they just kind of drop the carcass out of the web. So you might get these little piles of bugs that they've eaten, you can sweep those up whenever without even really disturbing the spider. They do also sometimes make webs in annoying places. They don't seem to need a vertical overhang like a lot of spiders do or like cellar spiders normally prefer. If they've got two perpendicular vertical surfaces, they'll put a web right there. This couple put their web right on my back door from my storage room outside. It's right at thigh level, so that's a little irritating. This one set up shop underneath my desk and seems completely unbothered by my feet. But they won't necessarily stay up high and out of the way or down in a corner somewhere. Sometimes they can be a little bit inconvenient in that regard. As for movement, this is where they're a little nicer. Once they build a web, they tend to stay in it. These spiders are very reluctant to leave their web. If they're not catching enough prey, they'll pack up and move their web somewhere else. But once they're in it, they generally stay there, so you don't need to wonder where they are. They don't travel around a lot, so they're very good on the surprise and startle factor. You're not usually going to see these crawling up the wall out of nowhere or crawling across your ceiling. They don't get around a lot. As for bites, I mentioned earlier that the only way they'll really bite is if they get squeezed against your skin, and that's really unlikely because they almost never leave their web once they're in it. So the whole scenario of them getting pinched again your, against your skin is almost never going to happen. They're not going to fall off your ceiling onto your bed sheets and get pinched that way, because they just don't move around that much. So that's what life with this spider is going to look like. So some other things to note. I noticed something about these spiders in regards to where they weave their webs. And for a long time, I wondered if I was imagining it until I came across this paper in the March 1964 issue of the Canadian Entomologist. It's a riveting read. What I'd noticed was that while cellar spiders and many other spiders tend to set up their webs wherever the physical conditions seem most ideal in terms of overhangs, these common house spiders tend to settle for nothing less than high prey traffic areas, and that seems to be the priority. This one, for instance, is in my office window, which is poorly sealed, 
And you can see that this spider has had an absolute field day with this location because that's where the bugs are coming in. I'm glad you asked, inquisitive internet person. Here's why you care. Spiders are often regarded as sort of a canary species when it comes to other insects in your home. So a disproportionately high population of spiders is not in and of itself a problem. They don't do any actual damage to your home. They're obligate predators, so they don't eat your food or walk all over it and spread diseases and they very rarely bite. If there's not enough prey in your home, they don't stick around. They either leave or they die off. What that means is that if you do have a high population of spiders in your home, that might be indicative of another problem that you may not actually even be aware of. Spiders are strict predators, so they don't actually eat anything in your home, but they do eat the stuff that will damage your home, like ants or termites or other pests that contaminate your food and spread bacteria. So even if you could get rid of all of the spiders in your home, you would just quickly find yourself up against another problem entirely that you might not have even known you had. And that might have been a problem the spiders were keeping at bay for you. Now, all of that is true of spiders in general, so what makes this one special? This is not entirely scientific. I haven't seen papers on this, but I think the web site selection of these spiders can actually tell you something. The high prey traffic areas are very often exactly the routes that insects are using to get into your home in the first place. So these spiders might not only tell you that you have a problem with insects getting into your home, but they may also tell you how and where those insects are getting into your home meaning they are functioning both as gatekeepers and as indicators of weak points in the outer envelope of your house. I haven't seen any other spider that is this kind of a tattletale. And if you do have too many spiders, figuring out where the insects are getting in and taking care of that problem is going to make the spider problem take care of itself. So the last details, these spiders are interesting in that they're a little bit more sociable than most. The male, after running for his life after mating, will often actually stick around and share the web long term with the female. They'll even share meals with each other sometimes. And the females tend to be a little bit more tolerant of other females living close by than most spiders are. They occasionally get into little scraps if one gets too close, but it's not uncommon to find several of these living nearby in a fairly small space. So there you have it. That is Parasteatoda tepidariorum, the common house spider. I hope you've learned something about this spider in your house, and I hope to see you next time. Cheers.